morning everybody and welcome back to another fossil hunting video of the Yorkshire coast. I'm at a beach I've not been to for quite a few months. I really miss this beach but I've been avoiding it because of the huge ferns. I finally decided to face them. So I've come out to Ravenscar today. I'm just making my way down the huge hill climb. So as some of you may know, the way down to Ravenscar is quite remote. And during the summer months it gets full of huge ferns which carry ticks unfortunately i suspect they will be still quite high but i've got my full waterproofs on at the end of this video i'm going to be showing you a really good find that i had recently i've actually only found this ammonite once before which i've kept and it's a really good one to add to my collection a rare upolias ammonite can you have any guesses as to what you think it is It's a really good low tide today. I think it's 0.7 meters the low is, but that'll be a while. It's about four or five hours before low tide. But I am hoping to get round to the second bay because I want to prep some grammars. I've pretty much extinguished my prep for the grammars, which are always fun to do. People have been asking about the get down to Raven Scar, and it's definitely not somewhere I'd recommend you doing in the summer months like this especially if you've not done it before. Whoa. About halfway down now. So some of these ferns are to the head or shoulder height, which makes it really difficult to get down. I imagine the path will get a little bit worse further around where the path splits into multiple directions. That means there's gonna be less people traveling on it. So the ferns will be higher. Almost there now, just got this little bit of area here to try and get round and then I'll be on the beach. I can already see the tide's still plenty in so there's no rush to get down there. Right then I've made it down the beach finally. In a minute I'm gonna get my waterproofs off and give them a really good shake to get rid of any ticks that I might have jumped onto me. But I have just spotted my first fossil find of the day. Look at that sharp point. A beautiful fossil find. So I've just slid down the bank and usually I cut across the top up there but it's getting very undercut so I have just literally skipped by that bit. But I have just spotted a bellamite on the floor. Now this one is in the bedrock so I won't be touching it apart from just showing you it because you're not allowed to dig them out. A lovely little bellamite protruding into the beds there. I'm sure there's plenty of them to be seen if you look closely. That one's actually going downwards. Very interesting. Hopefully I'll find a few eroded loose ones. Well, it's looking like we've got the beach to ourselves for the moment. Can't see anyone unless they've already scooted right round over the top, which I wouldn't really recommend. Anyone who's into plant material, I'm sure will love this remote location. I mean, that must have been a tree branch. I would have thought at one point, and there's lots of things like that around. or a tree root. When you walk in this way, especially this little bit here, I often find you have to be quite careful because you find the odd seal which has pulled itself and is having a rest. There is a big rotten dead one just behind me. I'm not gonna film it, it absolutely stinks. I believe Andrew Cuff has already reported it to the seal people. So I'm down to the main fossil bearing bit of the beach now. You get a lot of dacks and more common fossils here. I usually find more when the tide's gone out, but we'll have a good look around scavenging all the little areas where bits wash in and hopefully find something worth prepping back at home. It does look like we've got quite a few nodules just washed up in these little rocky areas. So I'm going to go ahead and have a look now live on camera and we'll pick up a few nodules and see what's inside, if anything. Nothing. Nothing by the looks. I can see a keel on this one, but it's so crushed. I'm not even going to collect that one. I 
you're just looking for one with a beautiful keel showing that's all you need anything that is worth tapping I will obviously collect that's interesting looks like a, a grammo whirl or something like that I'll take that as well another nice one it's just whether whether they're preserved well or not so there was a few typical very squished and poorly preserved ducks in that one usual thing for raven scar is that they smash or obliterate like that i will probably take this one i mean it's gone a little bit there but it might be all there in the middle you never know look at that for a nice perinoceros got some nice nodes on it but unfortunately the preservation is just totally knackered just shows you the quality of that here well, that though. just looks incredible unfortunately another bedrock preserved bellamite but look at how beautiful it is it's a really large size one as well with the fragma cone preserved as well it's got a few cracks in it so i bet it won't last many more seas but you have to leave them so i've just hit into this one i mean the split is terrible but it's rather clean and i think it could be a cat in there it's quite chunky so i'll take that one back i think i can always ditch it on the way back if there's loads to carry but I'll give it a go, sticking it back together and then prepping it. I can see something that I love collecting. A beautiful bivalve shell. Preserved really well. Looks like it's only just come out of the shell slab, that one. Might even have a go at braiding it. Lovely. I've just popped this open and it's a nice section of a phyloceros whirl. The outer bit of the ammonite. Nice prioritisation on that. But that one's not for me, I'll leave it on a rock and either someone will collect it or the sea will just take it. I'm currently just having a, a drink and then I'm going to make my way round the other side. And hopefully it won't be too slippy, but I suspect it will be with all of the green algae growing. So I've just found this and to anyone who doesn't really know what they're looking for, it just looks like another rock. But there is an ammonite inside there, I mean you can see the outer world going there and it goes right round. It's got a little crack running, so I think I'm going to give this a tap rather than prepping it. I'm just going to literally tap it right on the crack. And if it's going to go, it's going to go. And it was kind of easy, really. In this little clip, I accidentally grabbed my camera by the microphone and covered it. So it kind of ruined the audio. But let's take a look at the split of the Gramoceros. As you can see, it was a decent split. Unfortunately, the very middle of the Grammo Ammonite is just not very well preserved, which is often the case with some of these Grammos. Still nice enough to collect and bring back home though. I did just spot another one out of that little bit of rock what popped off, and this is a nicer one. It's really small, but a lot more perfectly preserved. I do appreciate an Ammonite with a good middle. Remember everyone, if you'd like to purchase your very own fossil from the Yorkshire coast, please check out my website called buyafossil.com. We've got a bunch of prepped and unprepped material with shipping to most countries. Please take a look if you are interested. Thank you. Right then, I'm round to the second bay now. I've got to say, it was awful getting round there. All the rocks are really algified. Not very nice, probably the worst I've seen it. But I'm there now, it took a bit of effort. Just picked this one up. There's obviously the edge of an ammonite there. Not sure what species it is, might be worth a little tap just to see. And another one. With a nice Gramoceros inside. Looks like quite a golden one, so I'll take that one back without hitting it. This is all I saw when I first picked up the rock, just a partial Gramo. But on the other side there's a lovely preserved one. It's got a nice middle. So we've got another nice looking Gramoceros to prep there. Should be all in there, it looks like a good one. It's all running round anyway the world should run that way so i'm still out looking i've just unfortunately broke this nice looking pot it would have been really good but would have I had to give it a tap there was only a very worn keel showing it looked like a duck this is one of them more rarer bivalve shells it's not in good condition but you can see the little patterns it has on the shell 
most of the shell is actually worn away. Well we've got a nice looking keel but unfortunately I don't think it's going to be all in there. There was a little one, not sure if the middle is going to be there but some nice colours on that one. So I've just cracked open this rock, there was nothing showing which really indicated that it might be worth a tap but I did. And you can see there is a beautiful Gramoceros in there. Hopefully it's well preserved. Might be worth me taking that one back home I think, rather than hitting it anymore. So I don't know if you can make this out, but I've just collected a very little sea-worn Hildoceros. It's just got a cap on the middle. That won't take too long to clean out, maybe a minute or two, if that. So I'm about to start taking a walk back to the first bay now. Let's take a little recap of all the ones I've picked up so far. I don't think I've done too bad, considering it's still pretty much the summer holidays or just the end of it, and it's not really recovered. Not bad at all. We've got a really good low tide here at Raven Scar. It's gone out all the way now, which means it's a lot easier to walk back. Obviously, you've still got the jungle to go back through, but you'd have to go through these boulders. These are the boulders which I climbed through when the tide was still in. So I've just put this, a nice little hildy. It's obviously missing all that when I found it, but it's always worth a tap. It's not too And bad. I did think this was quite interesting. It's a knackered dak, but look at the pyrite sutures or whatever you call them, the chambers. Quite interesting, but not a keeper. Well, that's a nice little middle that I've just popped open. It's a chunky Perinoceros. Must have been a larger specimen, but quite often these warm middles can split particularly well. That's another one of them funky looking bivalve shells with the weird patterns. Found two today, we just need to pick one up which is fresh now. So this one, although it looks completely knackered, has potential to be a really nice Hildoceros. And that's what I think it is, because there's a keel which looks more Hildy-like than anything. But let's see if it's going to be a surprising one and it pops well. There we go, we've got a pop. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, not brilliant, unfortunately. Oh well. Now that's really annoying, especially because of the way it's split. Terribly. Inside this nodule was a little ichthyosaur vertebrae. And it's just popped awfully. See the cross section there? That is a real shame. Well, that's everything for today's video. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it. I'm going to head back up the cliff now, unfortunately, through the jungle, but luckily you don't have to do that. You can just fast forward to when I'm back home and I'll show you that really rare ammonite. Well, that wasn't very fun the entire way back up off the beach. It absolutely hammered it down and I'm soaked. Thunder, lightning and hailstone. I'm really glad I decided to bring my waterproofs out today because even they got soaked through. Hi everyone, I'm back up off the beach now. It's actually a few more days since the video at Raven Scar, which is why the weather looks so much better. But let's go ahead and look at that rare ammonite that I promised you at the start of the video now. So I don't know if any of you guys managed to guess, but the rare upper lias ammonite that I'm talking about is called the Lytoceros. Now in the six or seven years that I've been fossil hunting, I've only found two other upper lias ammonites of this species one which I unfortunately gave away, and one which is in my collection. So I'm really happy to have this new addition to my collection. Let's take a look at it. Here on the Yorkshire coast, I found something really rare, a Lytoceros cornucopia. These ammonites often hide stunning suture patterns beneath the shell, and their open spiralling coils make them stand out really well. This specimen would have been much bigger in life, but the sea had already damaged the rest of this rare fossil, but I'm just happy to have a beautiful middle of this rare ammonite. The prep work for this piece was expertly done by Mark Hawks at Stone Treasures. Lytoceros is considered a deep water ammonite species, but only occasionally wandered into the shallower seas of the Yorkshire coast back in the Jurassic times which makes finding one all that more remarkable. 